Hi guys, Jeff Allen off of Gridiron. Today I am in my garage and what I have for you is a quick tutorial on how to make a friction fit sheath for a neck knife all made out of some household materials rather than some of these expensive Kylex products. Stick around and I'll show you how to make it. Well if you're anything like me, oftentimes in the garage you have different bits and pieces of odds and ends from prior past projects laying around. And what I have, and what, what I'm looking for is a piece of PVC tube, plastic tubing, and we're going to take that and turn it into a neck knife. So again, looking through odds and ends of offcuts and whatever, I did, did find an old piece of PVC pipe, and I think that'll work quite well. Let's take it over the bench. I was doing some uh, woodworking in my garage and what I really needed was that quick deploy, something quick and easy that I could work with, work on, and then almost without looking, return it to a sheath and have it secured safely in there. So with our pipe in hand, we now need to measure off a, a given length for, for the, uh, the knife that we're working on. And in this case, I grabbed an old butcher block knife just to use as a demonstration. So again, we want that top to come up over the outside to allow it to, to bite and grab on and form that friction fit. And then we want to come down at least an inch beyond the tip. Okay, so we're going to take this, this length, mark it here and cut it. And then from there, we'll show you what to do next. Okay, the next step is to determine which end is uh, top or bottom. It doesn't really matter. It's a straight, uh, just a length of pipe. This, this length of pipe happens to be about eight and a quarter inches. So if we establish which end of the pipe is the top, from there we'll put the other end in the vise, like so, and then we'll use our heat gun to heat the pipe, to expand it, to be able to make it malleable enough to work with. We'll do that now. Okay, with the pipe back in the vise, make sure it's nice and snug. We're going to be using the vise to do some compression in a little while. And we have our knife ready for, for fitting. What we're using is a Black & Decker, in this case a Black & Decker a heat gun with two settings. Again, you do want to make sure that you're using uh, good ventilation for this because it can give off some, some, uh, some odor. Now, instead of using the knife, we, we can use the knife to start with. I often like to use something else to start the plastic uh, moving. You could use an old screwdriver, for example. Just to try to get that plastic moving, opening up and stretching in the direction you need it to go. It doesn't take too much. Now before we get too far ahead of ourselves, you do have a few moments to, to adjust the size of this opening. And what I also like to do is have a wet rag on hand. And then if you put the wet rag around the plastic, that, that water really cools it down and speeds in holding its shape until you're you're satisfied with its its shape. Okay, we can see that it is wide enough, but we want to now elongate our hole so it fits around this handle a little better. I'm going to turn this in the vise so you're able to see it 
a little better from a profile view. Now, you might want to get a pair of pliers or something to help stretch it vertically. But in this case, it's going to want to stretch around, around the knife and remold and reform its original shape. So you can see it's actually shrunk around the knife. Again, it's quite warm to work with. So now as it's cooling, I have to support that shaping of the knife and I move that in and out of the, the, the hole and it's still malleable. You can actually pinch it in a little bit and start to form that, uh, um, that, that thumb stud oh, and it's getting quite, it cools down quite quickly. You don't have a lot of time to work with it before you need to reapply heat. Okay, that way fits the best. And that is a good, good resistance in there. I don't know if you can see that. Boy, that's what we're looking for, that little click. Where it passes over a kind of restricted spot on the sheath and then it nearly it locks into place I'm quite happy with that right there with this one I'm not going to bother with the thumb uh, thumb stud the thumb release I think I'm quite happy with how that's fitting as is that's great okay so you can see the fit right now it slides in you can see the the, the shape that we've reformed, it's now formed, it's hard, it's not malleable anymore. And you can almost, you can hear that click, it's just a positive. And that's what we're looking for. That's not going to shake out of there. I can shake it quite hard and it doesn't go anywhere. Now what I'd like to do is kind of profile this, this tube a little bit. Uh, and in fact, unlike mine, which I really gave it a narrow, um, kind of I put it in the vise and squeezed it this way, I'm only going to do that with the tip, leaving a little hole open for any drainage, but certainly able to squeeze it so I can put a little hole for a lanyard. Now I offset this hole purposely because as it's laying on my chest, because it's in this top corner, it cants off to the side. Now I'm right-handed, so it really doesn't doesn't lean off excessively, but it's enough that I can find it, thumb release, work with whatever I need it to do, return it back to the hole, and I actually I know it's long enough. It's a little chest push, or you can use two hands. I was really going for a one-handed deployment use in returning. That's what we're going to try to get for this one as well. And already, oh, it's a perfect, it's a nice fit. I like that. Okay. Now, inside, I can see that we've left ourselves uh, enough area that it is a little, a little long. So when we see how far that goes in, we can see that we've left ourselves quite a bit of area. Now I'm going to come back roughly here and cut it off again and then I'll have a little less length to worry about because this is quite a long knife as it is. So you can take your hacksaw, makes quick work of this plastic piping. And I've made lots of knives, even over, over the open fire. Um, out of pieces of uh, either PVC or electrical conduit. So it works rather well. Clean up the edge here. Now we're going to apply some heat and pinch this end in. Okay, 
after that pinch in the vise, we can see that it's pinched off an area here. It's given us enough depth to put a lanyard hole. I'm going to take it over to the belt sander and clean up the end of that sheath. But that's so all I needed is so something to keep it safe in the toolbox or even to be worn as a neck knife. Let's go over to the vise and clean it up. Punch a little hole through there, and with the size of the paracord, and probably a quarter inch hole is sufficient, but you can use any size that you would like. Okay, and then we can actually use the knife itself to clean, clean up, deburr that hole. Okay. Okay, there you have it. Little pressure fit, plastic, waterproof, neck knife, lanyard hole, drainage hole, and super cheap to make. Get your knives in a sheath, if nothing else, in something simple like this to keep little hands and busy fingers nice and safe. Jeff Allen off the Gridiron, thanks for joining me today. Please like, subscribe, and share, and tune in next time to more of the great videos that I'm providing for you. Take care, enjoy the outdoors.